This video is designed to demonstrate how to make models using STL files in ExoCAD Galway 3.0. Uh, so open the Galway and we're going to start a new project. Uh, this is just showing the numbers of the teeth. You can select a client. In this case, we're using Boise Prosthodontics. Uh, we'll type in a name. Uh, in this example, we're going to use John Doe as our name of a patient. Um, before we get to that, we're going to click on the technician. Uh, and you can add a technician if you'd like. So you can edit. Um, we're going to add a new and type in a new technician's name. Uh, and then you'll just update. There you go. So we'll go back. And if you haven't added yourself yet, you can add yourself that way. Uh, and select on either one. We're going to stay with the original technician here. We added the name John Doe for the patient. Uh, you can put in whatever you want in the notes. We're just going to use diagnostic models, maxilla, and mandible in this case. Um, now to start telling ExoCAD what we want to do, just click on a tooth, any tooth for that matter, left click it, and you'll have this selection of things you, that we can do in ExoCAD. This is pretty straightforward. We're just going to click on adjacent tooth and then click OK. And then any tooth in the lower jaw, we will click on left click. And this time we will choose antagonist and click OK. Now we've told ExoCAD what we're going to do basically. Uh, so at this point we need to define where we're going to gather the information from or the files. So scan mode, we will select digital impression scans. Once we click on that, we will then hit save. There you go, save, and once we have saved it, we can then move on and tell or open up the CAD software using the model creator module. So once we click on model creator, the CAD software will open up. And once it's opened, it will prompt you to select the correct uh, jaw STL files. So the first one it asks for is the upper jaw scan. See there up in the upper left corner, it says upper jaw scan. Um, we're in the C drive of the computer. That's where it stores these files automatically. Um, and, but we need to find the STL files. So we move it off the screen so you won't see patients' names. Uh, and we go and find the upper jaw STL scan. In this case, it's a digital impression. Uh, obtained by a trios and then you upload it it'll ask then prompt you for the lower scan which we loaded as well here we're going to tell it that we would like to have a palletless model with an occlusal plane this is going to help you orient the models within a 40 millimeter um, reference plane you can push control and maneuver the models in any orientation that you want uh, you can rotate around, view, see the occlusal plane. Um, ideally, you want the teeth to be kind of in the middle of that. So again, you push control, click on an arrow and rotate it however you'd like. You can just click on the model, move it up and down. And ultimately, we've got it centered in there. Um, once you feel like you have it centered pretty well, then you can expand or contract the height of the models by clicking on that little model height left and right or with the task the scroll bar there and you can shrink it down or up just depends on what your purpose is for the models um, just to save resin in this case we shrunk it down we still included all the palette of the maxilla and we'll have all the data we gathered in the mandible the little arrows in the bottom right corner there just have set uh, locations to which you can view your models from the anterior, posterior, side, uh, intaglio surfaces. There you go. It looks like we're pretty good there. Um, once we feel like we have in the right orientation, the right occlusal plane, 
and the right thickness of the bases that you want to create, you can then move on to the next step. So once we're there and some of the extra scan data, if you feel like it's unnecessary, you can trim it down. And this I'm showing here that if you were making models for say bleach trays or sports garden, you don't need all that extra data. You can shrink it down so your models cut out um, a lot of the extra data. Uh, if you're needing the palette and to see the vestibule, uh, you'll want to expand that to as much as you can so that you know you have that data. In this case, we're just doing an opposing model um, for a mounting that we'll do later. So we don't need all the extra data. So we shrunk it down to save ink and time. Um, like I said, if you wanted to see the vestibules, like if you're gonna make an immediate denture or something of that nature, then you can expand it so you can get as much of that um, alveolar tissue or vestibular depth tissue so that your denture can fit even better. So I'll move on to next. In this step, you can edit any of the scan data, like that little area out there above the maxillary anterior teeth. Looks like a lot of extra data. You can actually highlight it and trim it away. Any of that extra data that you'd want, you can actually circle it, it'll highlight, and you can click delete. And now it's gone. That back left area, same thing, same thing, same thing. All those little areas you can click on and delete. In this one as well, you see that little fin in that posterior left area, you can trim it. So again, it's just a nice, more clean, neat model when you print it, uh, makes it easier to create those models. If you don't need that vestibular depth in any form. So now that we've trimmed that model, we can go next again. There's a lot of preset settings here. Oh, it talks about if, I would always don't modify the scan data. Um, sometimes they, the teeth, when they align in the scan, they're overlapping uh, and doesn't really happen in real life. So you can modify or just tell it to not modify the scan data, which is what we usually do. <clears throat> so here you can make dyes out of the selected teeth that you have. We don't need to do that. So you go next. These are preset settings on how to form the models. You can rotate the model to where you feel is a better insertion point. That's where it builds the base up in the maxilla here or down in the mandible. We want a hollow model. Uh, we want to have about two and a half to three and a half millimeters thickness. It's naturally set for two and a half millimeters thickness. Uh, and there you go. You hit run and it'll calculate it. And now you have a 3D model. And you'll see how it built the base up to that predetermined height at the very beginning in the occlusal plane setting. Now we will hit next and we do the same thing with the mandibular model, set the view, hit run, it'll calculate it, and you can see where it built that base down. Um, looks pretty good, we'll hit next. At this point you can add attachments, you can add a name, um, you can print little supports so it has its own articulator. Um, we don't usually do too many things like that, but you can go through all those and see how they're usable for whatever you may want. In this case, we're just going to go to the text section and put on there the name. So in this case, it's John Doe. We'll type in John Doe and usually a date. Uh, we want to subtract that, make it negative into the model. I think it prints better that way. Um, so right there again, we'll type in the name, John Doe, a date, and then do subtract. Oh, we didn't hit subtract on this, but we'll set the position. And in this case, it's going to build it out from the model. It's going to be a positive name. Um, usually we want it to be into the model. So you'll see there we hit subtract. Now it's changed it. Um, we'll have to... Usually we'll do that on the mandible as well uh, so that we know exactly who it is. You can add text, it'll ask us to type it in again. Sometimes, there you go. Sometimes I'll right click it and copy and paste it. 
and go next to calculate it and make the imprint into the model and at that point it should be ready for printing I'm gonna do something here that we like to do uh, because we found it keeps the orientation that's already in so we go to expert mode and go next and we'll we will save individual models as STL files um, and there's lots of tools you can use there uh, but for all intents and purposes here we will save each individual model and in doing so we turn off all the other images or meshes and we just leave one on and we'll right click the screen here in a second and we will click save as and then we will click on an STL. We'll find the file that you would like to save it in. In this case, we're just going to save it within the same CAD file folder. Um, Maxilla models, usually what we can label it as, or diagnostic model. And this is the reason we do it this way. The next step, we change the plain STL, we save. It's going to ask us, yes, that visible object we want to save. And do we want it in the original coordinate data system? We say yes, because if we were to do more things with this case, we can bring the data back in at the same orientation as it is. If you just stopped and printed the models from what ExoCAD makes, they come in uh, a different orientation. And so we would like to save it that way, especially if we're doing any digital planning and implant planning software uh, and so on. So I like to have these done. Again, we label the mandible. We do it the same process, right click, save as, labeled it correctly in the right folder and saved it and now we have models that we can use for a variety of different things.